memories of the hills on the hillside that old moon's light show and it sends out a light when I'm tossed about that I think the world will see about something very sensitive today for some. Exodus chapter 32, and I'll just speak to you very kindly in love, but I cannot be timid if you understand what I'm saying. I have to be bold as a lion. Uh, I have to cry loud, lift up my voice like a trumpet. I feel a virtue. What I'm about to say is going to directly affect someone today. Somebody needs to hear this very word. And I speak it prophetically. You need to understand. Evidently, there's an understanding that is needed about your life, your heart, about God. And we have to come to grips with these things. Verse 25. This is a situation when Moses was up in the mountain praying. Chapter 32, verse 25. But he came down and he saw the children of Israel sitting, dancing before the Lord calf, and he broke the tablets of God. And he was angry. Verse 25 starts off by saying, please. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked until their shame among their enemies. Church, they prayed all up. When Moses saw that the people were naked, not necessarily clothless, but they were in idolatry. They had already strayed away from God. When we stray away from God, we are considered as being naked. We're not clothed uh, with the covering of God's grace. When God created Adam and Eve, he created them naked because there was no shame, because there was no sin. But when sin came, he clothed them. It was a type of covering of our nakedness. That's why we were clothed today, because it's a spiritual principle behind it. Clothing covers our sin. It's a type of covering for sin. It represents the covering of sin, the mercy of God, and we cover our nakedness. So then when we step, just like when people uh, walk in the new, their shame is being presented again. When we step outside of the covenants of God and the word of God, we too become spiritually naked. And they saw the people were naked, for Aaron had made them. Are you preachers hearing this? Aaron made them. Now we know Aaron didn't make them do what they did. But he being the ruling elder in charge, he didn't stand against them. I feel a virtue. You must understand, people, the positions of authority in every phase of your life. On the job, in the church, in the home. Those who are put in charge have a great responsibility. Not only can they lose their souls for themselves, but they can lose their souls because of you. Come on. To whom much is given, much is expected. 
Aaron made them naked. But well, we know Aaron didn't tell them to do that. But he did not withstand them. Therefore, being left in charge, going, going along, following the pew, the poor pig gets it too. Hello? And made them shame among the enemies. When we walk naked, when we go contrary to God's laws and people know that we represent God, we embarrass the Lord before the sinning world. We embarrass them. The Bible says when the righteous fall down before the wicked, it's like a corrupt spring in troubled waters. Read. Verse 26, and then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. The Holy Ghost just refreshed up on my spirit. Now, I've read this many times, but it never stuck out. Here's the bottom line. You've got arguments in church, debates in church. You've got people fighting this, fighting against that, going against that. But the truth of the matter is, is whose side are you on? Come on, make it up. Who's on the Lord's side? That's the bottom line. Whose side are you on? That's what the rubber meets the road. When it's all said and done, the question is, whose side are you on? Yes, sir. Who's on the Lord's side? So let me ask you a question. Who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? When we get through talking about what doesn't make sense, this doesn't make sense, this doesn't seem right, I've been bruised, I've been hurt. When it's all said and done and you have to make a decision, whose side are you on? Who's on the Lord's side? Everything you can think about going through, he's been through. Because you get defeated in a battle doesn't mean you have to change sides. That's right. That's right. You just be a prisoner, hell captain, that's all. Until your deliverance comes. Anybody understand what I'm saying? There were a lot of missing in action during the Vietnam War. A lot of were prisoners of war. Field dozens. But they didn't become Vietnamese. They were captive Americans. And because sometimes you may become a prisoner of war, doesn't mean you have to become an outright sinner. You're just a saint held captive waiting on your chains to come. And when your chains come, your deliverance comes forth. Then you can say, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Oh, they can capture you. They captured those soldiers and they tortured a lot of them, but they wouldn't spill the business. Oh, I might stumble along the way and get captured by the enemy, but I ain't finna sell out. I feel embarrassed. I feel ashamed. I know I shouldn't have done it. Shouldn't have been that, but I ain't finna sell out. Which is the Bible said, whatever you do, you're fighting, you argue, whatever you do, don't lie on the truth. I'm not finna point the finger at him. Till my change comes. I break these shackles. So don't let the devil tell you you're going through so you might as well change size. No, devil. I ain't changing size, but I'm going to change you. I'm going to change and get away from you. Anybody hear me? Well, he said, who's on the Lord's side? Let them come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves and gathered unto him. Verse 27 says. And he said unto them, thus said the Lord God of Israel. Sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp and slay. I feel the virtue. Every man his brother. The Holy Ghost said, "Bring this out." Before you say you on the Lord's side too, you better be willing to do what He tell you to do. He's not going to just take your word for it. No, no, but you have to show fruit that shows you on the Lord's side. I feel the virtue. I was talking to one of the brethren. We were talking about the young man, the man who had the son that had the devils in him. And he brought it to the disciples and they could not cast him out of the apostles. And when Jesus came, he said, what's the problem? 
He said, I brought my boy to your apostle, but they couldn't cast him out. Jesus said, bring it in. He cast the devil out. And the disciples said, Lord, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus said, some things don't come out except by fasting and prayer. Amen. But now here's the catch. And for the first time, I kind of saw it in a deeper way. Do you understand what I'm saying? He said, now listen, these men used the name of Jesus. They were all saying, we cast you out in the name of Jesus, but the devil didn't budge. Because you need to use the name of Jesus, don't mean demons are going to respect it. If they don't feel the presence of Jesus in that name, they're not going to respond. See, even devils and demons know the power of the Most High. Many times they cried out and said, we know who you are. So because you use the name of Jesus, that means devils are going to budge. If they don't feel the presence of God in that name, when you use it, they're going to realize that you're powerless. You understand what I'm saying? Well, why come the situation had not moved? I called on Jesus, but yeah, when you called on Jesus, the spirits you rebuking didn't feel Jesus in the midst. But when you use the name of Jesus and the presence of God comes down, Amen. then you can say, I've got all the power of the enemy. Yeah. And you will see, I feel the virtue. You will see a reaction. And the demon said to the seven brothers, Paul, I know, and Jesus Christ, I know. They use the name of Jesus. We are Jew, you in the name of Jesus, the God of Paul. The devil said, I know Jesus. I know Paul. He said, but who are you? You using that name, but I don't feel the presence of God in the midst. You want to get result. When you call upon that name, be sure he inhabits that praise and that exhortation. Be sure that the presence of God is within you. Because demons know the difference. You get, you've got many false spirits and false prophets who call themselves Jesus. So there's no power in the name if the presence of God doesn't come in it. And dwell in the midst. They know. You understand what I'm saying? Demons know when you're connected and when you're not. Church, say praise the Lord. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If you want them devil to move when you call upon that name, then make sure God is present and your faith is there. He said, every man that's on the Lord's side come up. And everybody stood up. The Levites, the priests came and they stood by his side. Oh my God. Then he said, put your sword on. Now, Walk with me a little bit. We are standing with Moses. Something has gone down and he said, who's on the Lord's side? And Tabernacle says, we are. And so we're standing with Moses and he turns around and he looks at us and say, every man put your sword on by your side. We put our sword on. He said, now you go down in and out from gate to gate, from wall to wall throughout the camp. And I want you to slay every man his brother, every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. So now you got to go down and look at your, your husband, your wife, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your friends. They did not stand with the Lord. How many would drop the sword? See, you serve a God that don't play. That's what I'm trying to show you. You serve a God that takes no excuse. It's either him first or him not at all. Can you, can, if you can imagine the preacher, can, can, can you imagine that? Your sons, your daughters, your companions, your friends. Who's on the Lord's side? I can feel my heart beating now. So I ask that question again. Who's on the Lord's side? Think about it. Because they ain't going to tell him what he's going to ask you to do. As verse 28 said, read. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell the people that day about 3,000 men. For Moses had said, consecrate. This is the message. 
Moses said, Consecrate yourself, yourself today, today to the Lord. And that's what I'm telling you. Consecrate yourself today to the Lord. But look how he said, Read. Even every man upon his son and upon his brother that he may throw upon you blessings this day. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do because sometimes your own blood will cause you destruction, will cause you to miss out with God. This is a, he said, consecrate yourself unto the Lord. By what? By putting him before all. By choosing him first in the midst of all that you love and care for. You see, God knows better than us. Before Esau and Jacob were even born, the scripture says that God said, Jacob, I what? I love and Esau, I what? I hate you. Now, we would say that was awfully bad of him until we find out as they got older that Esau sold his birthright and then wanted to kill his brother. God knew this. So when God said, put your sword on you and everybody go sanctify yourself, consecrate yourself upon your brother, your companion, this and that, because he knew that if he didn't stop that rebellion, that all of Israel will be wiped out. 